Hey everyone, Robin Riley for Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my Talk Crafty To Me video tutorial. This one I'm going to demonstrate the salad spinner technique. So hang on, this one's going to be messy and a lot of fun. Before I get started with the supplies that I'm using, I want to invite you to our Facebook groups. We have two of them, the Del Bello's Design Lounge, where we feature all of our Lavinia products. We also have the Del Bello's Design a la carte page, and there we showcase all of the other products that Patty currently has in her store. We are on other social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And to find us there, all you have to do is search the hashtag Del Bello's Designs. Join us on our YouTube page also. There, we would love to have you subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notification as to when our newest videos are up and running. So let's take a look. There is no way in the world I could ever make this card again. These are a one and done and very unique when using the spinner to create your backgrounds. But this is an example of one that I did a while ago. So let's get started on some of the things that I'm going to be using. So first of all, you need a salad spinner. I went to a local secondhand shop and found this one for $2. Let's look at the inside of this. And most salad spinners, I believe all, have this innermost piece, which is somewhat graded. It has those openings. So you need to have, without a doubt, that center piece. So when you go to a secondhand store, make sure you're getting all of the pieces. I don't know if you can pick up on this, but there's a little raised point here. So when I first got this, I played around and I was just setting my paper in there and it ended up the paper was just flip-flopping all over the place. So I added a plastic cover so that now the bottom surface is level. Also, I learned after this was I was just setting my card in on top of that cover. That worked a little bit better. But what really worked well was when I figured out that I needed to stick the corners of my paper into those little grid marks. So today what I'm using is a 300 GSM card base that's measured five inches by eight inches. 300 GSM or above is the weight that I like to use when I'm adding a lot of liquid to my card. Anything below 300 GSM, you're going to get a lot of warping. So this is what I have found personally works best for me. Okay, so when I talk about securing this, I try to get the corners of my card as level as I can in those little grids. That's going to naturally fall out when I want to keep it as level as possible. So when I say level, I don't want this dipping in the center because then all my ink's going to run to the center. And I don't want it, you know, arched so that it all runs off to the side. So you have to play with, because you have to play with your spinner. And each time I do this, I have to play with it more and more. And granted, this piece is larger than what I would naturally be using for a card base, but I needed that size to fit into my grids. So each and every one of you will be a little bit different. Protect your work surface because you are going to be getting a lot of spraying of the ink. Okay, I am going to be using the Lavinia Acrylic Sprays today. I store mine standing straight up and down. And what happens, no matter which way you store them, if you're laying them flat or standing, the paint is going to thicken up at the base and it'll lay there or it's going to lay on the side. So you have to make sure you shake each time you go to use this product. I have yet to have any issues because this is strictly acrylic paint. There's no mica in it. So I'm not having any issues for this to be plugging. So don't worry about that. So far, so good. Now with this, I have found you need to spray a lot of paint at once and I do one color at a time 
and I only spin for a very short amount of time. You don't have to spin like crazy. So let's get started and see what happens here, okay? I'm gonna spray a ton of yellow in one area. I want it to pull because the pull is what's going to create the movement. So with this particular type, I have to, it has a pull string and I can stop it at any given time and take a peek. Now, as you can see, I did not get a crazy amount of movement. So what I can do is go back in, spray again very heavily, again heavily, get that lid on, give it a pull. I'm going to let it spin just a little, stop it. And now I've got some streaks. So you can see you really need to apply a large amount of liquid to get that movement. I'm coming in with the bright orange. You have to work quickly because the paper is absorbent. Give a quick pull. I'm gonna let this spin a little longer. Oh, I see some great movement there. As you can see, I got a lot because I moved so much quicker. That was awesome. I'm coming in with the third color, cranberry red. I do like to work in odd numbers for most projects of mine. Get a lot on there, move quickly, give this a pull. Now, naturally, I will never use this salad spinner for anything other than this. Oh, and check that out. Woohoo! That's a beauty. Now, if this is pulling too much for you, you can always come in with a paper towel. Dab that off to remove some of it. Personally, I'm just going to leave this alone. I'm going to let it dry naturally. And then when I come in to cut this down for a card base, I'll be able to remove the areas that I do not like. You can see how I got some splatter of the other color in this area here, which is fun. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let me set this down. I'll be right back. And I'll demonstrate another combination of colors. Okay, so once again... I'm going to try to place this level in my spinner. I should probably go in there and mark my areas. That would help, right? Get that one a little bit lower. Trying to keep this level so I don't get a lot of pulling like just in the center. And let's do a combination of the chartreuse. I think I'll do chartreuse, teal, and periwinkle. Remember, always give it a great spray going to give this a ton in one area give my spinner a pull and let's see what we got Ooh, good one happy with that yahoo okay teal let's give this a go you know you're gonna the more you play with this the more you're gonna see what you like what you don't like how you can change these up. And to be honest, you can stamp on these very easily. When they are dry, they stamp on perfectly. These are really funky looking, aren't they? So let's get a little bit there. Give that a pull. Oh yeah, that's that's really funky looking. Okay, I'm gonna come in with another, I'm gonna add a little bit of this um, cranberry red just for the fun of it. Okay, I'm just going against my rules of odd colors or odd numbers, right? Let's see what this does. Right, and the worst of it, it's a piece of paper. If I don't like it, I throw it away. Yeah, nice, nice, super, super neat spread on that one. Okay, fun. Okay, set that down to dry before you stamp on it. Okay, let's look at just one more so I don't bore you. It's, the process is the same over and over. I am guessing this would work with the Lavinia mica sprays. I just do not have any of those at this time. 
All right, let's come in with some fall colors just for the fun of it. This is the Burnt Umber. I really do like this color. Okay, this time I'm going to make it a little longer looking. Let's see if I get any spread on this. Oh yes, I got some. Cool. That came out really cool. Let me add some of the bright orange again. Ah, fingers aren't moving fast enough. Nice. And let's add some yellow. Let's see what kind of a spread we get on this. I'll let this one go a little longer. Okay, again, there's that yellow. That one just, that one really soaks up fast. I'm going to add a little bit more, see if I can get some movement on that. Yeah, there, I got a little bit there. Ooh, fun. Okay, let's add one more. Why not be crazy and do four colors? Chartreuse. Yes, and let's add, oh, we are, I am going crazy, right? Really crazy here. What color? Let's add this midnight blue just for the heck of it and see what happens. See how much movement we get here. I mean, talk about some funky backgrounds. This reminds me of the tie-dye days. Oh, crazy. Really crazy. But fun background. So you can see how easy this is to do. Hey, I hope you give this a try. Go ahead and get a little inky and get a little messy and see what you think of this technique. I'm sure it's not for everybody, but to me, it's just a fun thing to try and to play with. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <music>